now invite John D. Milton for.
as he made his way to those, you got the money, we ask no questions, tax havens. This is a place where a new CEO of recruit, who became my bro, a happy-go-lucky, impressive, and talented young man, newly went to a gorgeous girl when I, first, when I, when I saw him as I was at Los Angeles for another post in England. Several years later, I met him in Vancouver, Canada, out of the Sea Org, darkly depressed, unemployed. His wife had been forced to have an abortion, attempted suicide, and then, had been ordered, and then they had been ordered to divorce. I don't know what else had happened to him up there. I, don't have time to, I didn't have time to ask him. Um, decided to catch a plane, but that joyous spark that defined him was gone. This was a place where a person struggling with depression and mental, and mental illness, and indeed physical illness, was labeled a downstep, a degraded being, and shunned by the upstart uptown Scientologists. This is where a friend of mine called Alice separated from her lover and consigned to what's called an RPF, some kind of a prison camp is the best way to describe that. She swallowed half a bottle of paint thinner and jumped from her roof. We were ordered by the public relations people to say that she slipped on the steps. I don't know how they explained to the council why her lower intestine was in tatters, but she, now crippled at the age of 19, was shipped off to Italy to be cared for by her mother as soon as they could move her. Um, I won't take a um, This is where the, a policy called power, the responsibility of leaders, um, detail how to behave and to act when close to a real power, him being L. Ron Hubbard, and flowing power to him, L. Ron Hubbard, the power source. I will to my dying day have sealed to my consciousness that statement, see those pink legs over there? She didn't like me, the boss replies, so why are you bothering me with it? This is an actual Hubbard quote from a policy that all Scientologists reads. You can look it up online sometime. And the policy continues where Hubbard has a South American dictator rounding up all the lepers in the city and loading them onto barges and telling them that they're off to a fine island designated just for them. And then going up the barges midstream. This policy letter is praising the action <coughs> and advising Scientologists' future world leaders to take note. And I do not need to work clear the policy. It says exactly what it says. Now, what of a child growing up in the corporate psychosis? A child in the Sea Org is consigned to what's called the Cadet Org, where they are trained to become Sea Org members. Now, I know of a group of children at the English HQ who did not see their parents for six, eight months at a time, and then only for a week. Parents were too busy on projects over in Florida or in some other remote location. The OSA PR would come to me in a flat every now and again uh, to organize a bus for the kids and then dress them up in jolly t-shirts, holding little brooms and little bags, and run them down to London where they'd hand out the way to happen as booklets. And they would pose for photo opportunities in front of the Houses of Parliament. The photos were for the Freedom magazine that gets delivered to MPs, councillors, police, and charity commissioners. I looked after a friend of for 12 months in that awful place in Los Angeles while he was on a mission in Austria. I would be at work or training from 9 o'clock in the morning, so I would drop the child off down at the cadet in the morning and pick up the sleeping bundle and get it at midnight when I got back. I took the kid to the beach for Christmas Day, that was our only day off, and I tried to organize phone for hookups with his dad every now and again. The kid was six years old. His mother had been asked Peter Kerr about two years before and had no access or contact whatsoever with that child. Now I must end, uh, I'm going to close it fairly soon, but there's a couple of things I want to say. One is the story of a, a good friend of mine. Uh, she's a, she was a teenage girl and um, was going through some difficulties with various things that teenage girls can go through. Um, now, this was related to me by her herself, because I was talking to her recently. Now, I knew her as a kid before she disappeared, um, and uh, as younger kids, uh, her and her sister had been dragged into the Sea Org by the freshly recruited Sea Org parents uh, with their fixed and dedicated glares and dumped into the cadet uh, This young girl went through all the emotional deprivation that Hubbard and his people seem to think that a child should go through in order to become unthinking, unthinking tools. 
By the age of 13, this beautiful young girl was rebelling, as teenagers do, but she had a lot more reason to do so. Now, her sister had tried to escape, going to the local council to get help, asking for a care order and rehousing. The council people had Scientologists working in it, and they took her back to St. Hill and the Olsen Hangars. She spent the next three years on an RPM camp in, in America. Now, the legal <coughs> worked out that this younger sister was too much trouble. The 13-year-old girl was declared a suppressive person. Legal and PR, and what's called senior NCO staff, told the CEO parents that they could be with the child and care for her, or they could be more realistic. There is no such thing as a child in Hubbard's world, just an adult in a small body. Now, that was what applied in this case. The parents chose to remain in the seat on their sale posts, didn't even say goodbye to their daughter. At 8 p.m., Osa took her to the train station, no passport, no papers, gave her 40 pounds and put her on the train to London and told her to never come back. Now, I don't need to get too much into how she slipped into nightclubs after the first night in the streets in the first grade, picking up people, men and women both, and getting them to take her home. Her sweet ethereal looks got her fronting for drug pushers and petty thieves, and she made a life of sorts in that world. She only recently went through a Buddhist drug rehab in Thailand. She's back in England now and doing much better. And I saw her mother again. Her mom is too frail to stay in the seal or get any more, and she was dumped out into social services. This once little girl, now a young woman, confronted her mother with that heart-wrenching story. The mother nodded, acknowledged her daughter, and tried to get her to buy one of Howard's new release books. Thank you very much.